Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Ripple's chief legal officer, the top in-house lawyer over at Ripple, had some choice words for the SEC, which I'm looking forward to sharing with you, but uh, he certainly wasn't holding back here, outright uh, claiming, and accurately so, that the SEC is intentionally deceiving judges, or at least trying to. That's the actual intent. Now, I've been saying that for a long time. It couldn't be more obvious to me. Which is why in all these cases where they do this, I'm just sitting there thinking, if I'm the judge, I don't care for that, you know? And there's a reason uh, Magistrate Judge uh, Sarah Nepburn in the SEC v. Ripple case said that the SEC wasn't engaging in, oh, how did she word it, a faithful allegiance to the law? I believe that was the exact quote. So I'm going to share with you, <laughs> exactly, well, I'm going to share with you the story, of course, that led to this. Then I'm going to share with you commentary from Stuart Alderati, Ripple's chief legal officer. Uh, I want to share with you a post from John Deaton's crypto law organization. I've got a post from uh, Paul Graywell. He, of course, is the CLO over at Coinbase. And I've got a post from uh, an attorney within the XRP community, attorney James Murphy, a.k.a. Meta Lawman. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I am just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby, just for fun, damn it. And if you don't like it, well, you can just get out. All right, so take a look at this headline, and, you know, the deceptive practices that you're about to learn about here, they won't surprise you. Uh, they will disgust you, but they're not going to surprise you because you've been paying attention. This maybe uh, a t typical member of the general public would be uh, aghast by this. Like, no, really? The SEC? But you're just going to be down here like, yep, they're awful. We know they're asset pricks. Here's the headline from the block. SEC warns FTX against paying creditors back in stablecoins other crypto. <laughs> this, is, this is completely absurd, folks. Check this out. Throughout the FTX bankruptcy... Many different avenues have been explored or proposed to maximize creditor recovery from relaunching the FTX exchange in order to make money back for creditors to distributing claims as tokens in a new venture that can be traded. Yeah, and I'll pause state, when that was in the news, I was just like, it was one of those things I'm reading, the potential to have FTX rebooted after just billions uh, were lost in the Ponzi scheme. I'm just, it's just like, <sighs> audible sigh, face palm, eye roll, the whole thing. Uh, because the, the brand is ruined. <laughs> like, like, to what degree would the general public have trust? Like, I understand that they were thinking in, in the, you know, you know in, in good faith they would propose such a thing. And uh, it's, it's for respectable reasons. But my God, that would have been a terrible idea. Don't you think? Does anybody really think? I'm glad they didn't do it. Does anybody think that would have been a good move? Like, you're, you're going to fix that brand. The Ponzi scheme. The Ponzi scheme, you're going to try and reboot that and then make it trust it. Good luck. <laughs> Absolutely good luck. I understand good intentions, but man, I thought it was a silly-ass idea. Anyway, peace continues. Some decentralized marketplaces, such as Found at XYZ and Figure Markets, even launched support for tokenized FTX claims trading this summer in a move that one crypto CEO called one of the most crypto things he's ever seen. <laughs> However, FTX, led by its CEO, John Ray 3, so he's, by the way, he's the one that came in uh, after it was found to be uh, Ponzi, that the John Ray III came in. So uh, so he's the CEO. Led by its CEO, John Ray III, and legal counsel Sullivan and Cromwell, shot down the idea of restarting the exchange, claiming no investors would put up the capital needed to spin the offshore exchange back up again. Though some creditors have called for in-kind distributions, i.e. repaying lost crypto in, uh, in, in crypto rather than in cash, as in the BlockFi and Genesis bankruptcies, FTX's current plan is to pay creditors back in cash or U.S. dollar pegged stable coins. Now, and this is so this is where it gets interesting. So that last sentence uh, might pay in stable coins. That's where the SEC is being deceptive here. So the piece continues. Now, in a recent filing, the Securities and Exchange Commission has warned FTX that it reserves the right to challenge the legality of paying back claims or otherwise trying to make money from its stash of crypto asset securities. And that's a quote. That's the SEC quote, crypto asset securities. Uh, more on that in a minute. Uh, the SEC's filing also notes that the plan fails to specify who would distribute the stablecoins should that provision be approved. The SEC didn't outright state that such an action would be illegal, writing, quote, The SEC is not opining as to the legality under the federal securities laws, 
of the transaction outlined in the plan, end quote, but that notes that the agency, quote, reserves its right to challenge transactions involving crypto assets, end quote. So there you go. Uh, that would be the SEC being cryptic about crypto. What the hell does that even mean? I mean, it sounds like they're kind of warning, if you do this, I mean, just so you know, we're not saying we're going to sue you, but we might sue the hell out of you, just so you know. Why not just say whether it's allowed or not? Well, because they're a bunch of asshat pricks. So you're disgusted by this as you should be, no doubt. Uh, sadly, this isn't surprising. Anyway, the piece wraps up by stating, the SEC also joined the U.S. trustee overseeing the bankruptcy in objecting to a discharge provision in the plan that would indemnify the FTX debtors from future legal actions by creditors. Unless the plan provides that the debate, uh, the debtors rather, shall not receive a discharge and removes any discharge injunction, the court should deny confirmation. The U.S. trustee wrote in his filing, uh, citing the relevant statute. The administrative cost of FTX's bankruptcy has ballooned in the time since the exchange melted down. Fees requested by its staff recently surpassed $800 million, according to a tally from ex-user Mr. Purple. So, what did Ripple's top in-house lawyer have to say, Stuart Alderati? Well, here's what he wrote, and certainly not mincing words. He says, the term crypto asset security is nowhere to be found in any statute. It's a fabricated term with no legal basis. The SEC needs to stop trying to deceive judges by using it. Golf clap for Stuart Aldrati, everybody. Spot on. And I've been screaming that from the rooftops forever. It's And I'm not the only one. Um, and I know this because of attorneys within the XRP community. That's why I've been, I've been sharing the message. Crypto asset security, that's not a thing that exists, period. <laughs> you can say it all they want. And then there are implications to, you know, in, in people's minds when you have uh, that phrase out there being used by the SEC security. Oh, a crypto asset security? Yeah, except for it's not a thing. So Stuart Alderite, and just, I, I love, now that they're no longer shackled, you know, it's like the, 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 the case is over. I just noticed that Brad Garlinghouse and Stuart Alderite ever since, and, and I rather enjoy this, uh, they've become a lot more vocal and pushing back, certainly not mincing words. And I can understand why you'd uh, be a bit more reserved while you're in, you know, in the midst of the lawsuit. But I like being on this side of things, uh, you know, on this side of the lawsuit, to the conclusion of the lawsuit, because it's, it's more fun to see what they have to say, frankly. Uh, then we had this post from John Deaton's crypto law organization. He uh, actually responded to what I just shared with you from Stuart Alderati. And he simply wrote, and then there's this dot, dot, dot. And he shared the screen grab, which is the most important thing in the entire July 2023 ruling from Judge Torres, which reads as follows, XRP as a digital token is not in and of itself a contract, transaction, or scheme that embodies the Howey requirements of an investment contract. Right. None of them are. <laughs> there, is, there is no such thing as a crypto asset security. You can have a crypto that is packaged as a security like Bitcoin was in 2013. Bitcoin was packaged as a security. The courts found that to be true in 2013. Uh, not most, most people don't know that, but that's a real thing that happened. It was the SEC v. Shaver case. You can look it up yourself. Um, and, and, and so that happened. But uh, XRP here, it obviously, as the judge stated in and of itself, it, it doesn't embody any of that crap. The how we No, of course not. Yet they use the term crypto asset security because they're disgusting monsters. Here's a post from Paul Graywall, who, again, is the chief legal officer at Coinbase. He says... The SEC didn't outright state that such an action would be illegal, writing the SEC is not opining as to the legality under the federal securities laws of the transactions outlined in the plan, but notes that the agency reserves its rights to challenge transactions involving crypto assets. Why provide clarity to the market when, uh, when threats and aspersions will do? And of course, he's obviously being um, sarcastic there. Yeah, why would you provide the clarity to the market? You can just have these veiled threats, right? And then he says, investors, consumers, and markets deserve better, way better. Spot on, Paul. And then there's this from uh, attorney James Murphy, a.k.a. Meta Lawman. He actually reposted that from Paul Gray. Well, and he wrote, the SEC tried this exact, same exact hide-the-ball tactic in the Voyager bankruptcy. And the judge there appropriately rejected the ploy. Here's a quote from the Voyager judge. I cannot simply put the entire case into an indeterminate and expensive deep freeze while regulators figure out whether they do or do not think there is any problem with the transactions that are being proposed in the plan of distribution. If there is a problem, 
I expect a regulator to tell me that it has an actual objection, as opposed to saying that there might be an issue, and also to tell me what the issue is and why it is an issue, so that other parties may address it, and so that I may make a proper and well consider ruling, end quote. And so there you can go. The, uh, even the, the judges ain't having it anymore. And the word on the streets, it's out there. The all the judges know about the terrible track record under uh, Kim Jong Ginzer, the SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator. Uh, they understand how terrible his track record is and the losses and the reason that he's uh, been racking up all these losses. And, and so judges know to watch out for these snaky, snake-like uh, SEC asset prick attorneys. The judges know to watch for this. And they're, <laughs> that's why I keep seeing the hammer brought down. And it's, it's, it's fun to watch, don't get me wrong, but I'd rather just have an agency that is is reputable. That, that, I, that would be my preference. Could we get that, please? I, I know the answer is no. But anyway, <clears throat> Attorney Murphy then says, the SEC learned nothing from the judicial slapdown in Voyager and just throws the same grenade into the FTX bankruptcy. Hard to see how this action furthers the SEC's mission to protect investors. Yeah, well, spot on, and it sure as hell doesn't. But of course, again, like I said at the outset, you weren't surprised by this, are you? It's just more snake-like behavior. <sighs> I can't wait till somebody else is in charge. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.